from around the globe. It's the Cube, covering HPE Discover Virtual Experience. Brought to you by HPE. Welcome back. I'm Stu Miniman, and this is the Cube's coverage of HPE Discover 2020, the virtual experience. Really happy to welcome to the program. We have a returning guest. Tarkin Maynard is the Chief Commercial Officer at Nutanix in her new role since the last time we had him on the program. And joining him, we have Herman Brown, who's the CIO for the City of San Francisco's District Attorney. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, so Tarkin, you know, help, help set the stage for us. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, we know you, uh, you know, our network knows you, but uh, you know, new to Nutanix in, in the last year, um, and you know, talk to us a little bit about this HPE Nutanix partnership. Yeah, as you know, Stu, first of all, thank you for hosting us. Um, you know, great to be here. Um, this is probably, who knows, uh, my uh, 50th Cube, I guess, uh, over the past, you know, two decades, especially the last, you know, 20 years has been crazy for us, obviously, in the industry. Lots of movement, lots of change. Um, so uh, um, let me give you a little bit of context. Uh, I'm uh, relatively to, to Nutanix, joined the company about six months ago in the capacity of um, chief commercial officer, a hybrid role with some product aspects, business development, go to market, our club infrastructure, strategic alliances, and some of the corp that work we're working on. In that context to um, obviously HPE is a very, very important uh, strategic partner to us. Um, as you know, uh, the companies, the two companies have been uh, working together for a long time, but especially the last, I would say six to 12 months, uh, um, we have this uh, phenomenal relationship around uh, what I call uh, uh, key focused areas uh, of our business, uh, around our digital infrastructure, hyper-converged infrastructure uh, business. On top of, on top of that, uh, um, our solutions from data center to DevOps and to desktop services in these three specific segments, uh, we built this really interesting, really interesting relationship with HPE. Uh, with some of our uh, uh, software suites and HP's platform, now obviously uh, uh, working through a multi-cloud uh, uh, channel to our own, own Nutanix cloud, uh, our own hosted cloud. Uh, in addition to it, it's, uh, our telco and XSP partners using their cloud infrastructure, as well as some of the hyperscaler work we're doing with Azure AWS. In addition to our direct Salesforce and you know private cloud approach, HP and Nutanix are working hand in hand in this multi-cloud, so to speak, operating model. So um, it's a new relationship in some ways from a multi-cloud perspective. One of our fastest growing segments, we had a phenomenal quarter in the last uh, three months. We just uh, released our results um, and HP is uh, growing for us. And we're given a, a, you know, definitely a, a great suite of uh, um, solutions to our customers with the typical, usual, simple to deploy, simple to use Nutanix customer delight on the HP platform. So I'm sure we're going to talk a little bit more, but glad to be here with, also with Herman, Herman Brown, with the DA's office in San Francisco, my favorite city in the world. So uh, I'm glad to be here. So uh, uh, thank you, Stu, again for hosting us. Great. Thanks so much, Tarkin. Uh, you know, uh, Herman, uh, we're going to get into a lot of the technology pieces uh, you with your CIO hat on. Uh, you know, want to understand, of course, how, how cloud uh, how modern infrastructure, your applications are changing, but uh, you know, give us a little bit about you know your personal background and really the the purview that you cover uh, in, in the city of San Francisco district attorney's office. Yes, well, you know, I've been with the DA's office for just over three years. I'll be it'll be four years, I guess, in August of, of this year, and uh, I come from twenty plus years of private sector experience, some government experience, and um, you know, it's it's. You know, the city and county, the government is really no different than any other organization other than, you know, we're known to be a little bit slower to adopt the technologies, uh, which is why I'm here is, is I want to help government become more efficient, more productive through the use of technology. Uh, and so I'm excited to be here and thank you uh, first and foremost for, for having me on the show. Appreciate yeah. it. You know, I, I, I love you brought up that up because, you know, we, we've been doing the Cube for, you know, just over a decade now. And in the early parts of that, it's like, right, okay, if I'm talking to a local government, we understand your budgets are tight, you're using older technology, you've got you know, duct tape and bailing wire to keep things going. The last few years, some of my favorite conversations have been in the public sector because you talk about some of the tools that are out there and I don't need 
you know, a huge capital investment to get started. I can modernize. So, you know, Herman, I guess, you know, digital transformation, is that a term that, you know, you've brought from the private sector over to the public sector? You know, what kind of transformations are you going through? And what is it that's, that's, that's I guess, driving the, the need uh, for, for transformation in, in your world? Yeah, so, you know, so I've been with the, uh, the city and county of San Francisco for nine years. So I would love to say that I brought digital transformation or at least a term with me. Um, but I was actually here in the DA's office or in the city and county's employment when that terminology came out. Being the CIO for uh, the San Francisco District Attorney's Office, I mean, we're essentially a law firm. You know, and law firms are historically just paper intensive organizations, right? You have court filings and, and uh, rap sheets, all these uh, physical documents that have to be physically ink signed and, and transferred from, from one attorney to another to the courts and between police departments and sheriffs and so forth and so on. Um, and we just looked at, you know, what are we doing? How can we work more efficient? You know, as a lot of organizations were always uh, find ourselves to be understaffed for the amount of work that we have going on. Uh, the city and county of San Francisco, the DA's office, we see roughly 26,000 cases a year. We try about half of those cases uh, per year, and we're a staff of 320 people. Um, that includes everyone, you know, the attorneys, the paralegals, uh, finance folks, IT, um, investigators. And so it was like we need to really, you know, embrace technology and be able to help transform you know, these paper intensive processes into automated digital uh, forms and documents that can minimize the, the, the physical uh, yeah. transfer of, of data, especially now, you know, during COVID-19. Yeah, uh, Herman, you know, that, that, that transformation process, it's often multi-step, there's a lot of people, there's technology and there's, uh, you, you know, the applications. Uh, it was actually at a Nutanix show that uh, the, the comment I made is, you know, well, you know, let's modernize the platform, then you can modernize the application on top of it. Tarkin, maybe I'd love to hear just a little commentary from you. You've got a great perspective on this. You know, that modernization effort, um, you know, where your customers are, some of the levers that are helping uh, them along that journey. Yeah, so we, everything Herman said is very interesting and obviously, um, uh, delight to my ears uh, because as a technologist in the industry for the past you know three decades we are dealing with these what I call uh, transformational waves and I, you know last 10 years the cloud transformation from the server virtualization transformation now um, increasingly we're seeing uh, this very fast migrations to uh, from the old school uh, legacy data centers with legacy infrastructure and apps, basically uh, lifting and shifting these applications to a new cloud, uh, so to speak, a, a operating model. So cloud to us, in a sense, it's not a destination, it's an operating model. So uh, we see the customer's needs at the end of the day, uh, just like Herman outlined. Herman is not trying to do cloud or digitization for digitization or cloud sake. Um, he's trying to lead his team and for the DA's office, one of my most favorite DA's, by the way, in the nation, uh, with, uh, uh, with but then making sure that uh, they can uh, process data faster. They can achieve their goals locally, especially in this post-pandemic world and the entire change are happening in our country in a big way over the past uh, you know, few weeks uh, on the, the events and how our country is going to change as we move forward in the future. So there is going to be a lot of work going to happen in e-government. This transformational digitization, migration to the cloud is going to be a big deal. So as a company, uh, very quickly, we're seeing this as a huge opportunity with our customers as we're partnering with them in a multi-cloud way, so to speak. We still believe uh, our server partners are super important in this context with HPE, uh, uh, with their cloud services around HPE GreenLake, the things we're doing with them. At the same time, working with HPE and some of our other partners, delivering our own Nutanix cloud services, as well as some of the things that we're doing with some of the telcos and service providers to give choice to our customers to consume the services we provide on-prem through our own cloud services, through a third-party telco or service provider, or their choice of hyperscaler like AWS, Azure, Google, Alibaba, Oracle. So in this context, this partnership is hugely important. So there's a lot of work going on with HPE, with Antonio, with their CEO, with, with Tarek, with their CFO, 
with Tom Black, with Sonali Parekh, you know, with the entire executive team. We're working very closely with them, uh, with Heiko in the field organization, our, our field organization. And we really cherish customers like the DA's office who are doing that transformation, who are leading that transformation during this pandemic and during this massive change in our country. And hopefully it's going to make a transformational change to our, uh, to our world in terms of obviously not only technology, but social change. So you see this as a transformative time frame uh, for companies like us in HP and with partners like Herman and DA's office. All right. So uh, Herman, I mean, Herman, please. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I was just going to say, and, and absolutely, I, I agree with Tarek. I mean, the, the way that we're able to react so quickly to this pandemic is the fact that we've already have started this digital transformation, that we've already looking at these cloud services, we've already started down this path. Uh, and so it's made the transition with this certain, you know, overnight change of, you know, in the office nine to five, you know, five days a week to, you know, everyone is remote every day now. Um, we couldn't do that without, you know, having these cloud services such as Nutanix HP partnership uh, to, to make that possible. Yeah, is there, is there something specific? You talk uh, the, the work from home initiative, um, is, did you have to scale something out? Did you have to, you know, what, what Bring us inside that change that helped enable your workforce uh, that you wouldn't have been able to do without this technology. Oh yeah, we absolutely had to scale out the workforce. I would say that before the beginning of this pandemic, we had roughly 15 people that probably had VPN access from outside the office. Now you have to also understand that the DA's office is very um, unique in the form of the types of data that we handle and deal with. So I have, you know, HIPAA data, I have CGIS, which is criminal justice information uh, that's managed by DOJ. So there are certain systems that we normally would not be able to access from outside of the office um, that we had to be able to, to, to access now remotely. Um, and so it's taken some time to get us there to that, to that point. But, you know, having this environment that allowed us to scale up easily, start looking at, you know, digitizing this process and being able to have the storage and compute processing power to be able to support that initiative is really what we're talking about. And, uh, and, and that's what we've been doing. We've been quickly scaling, adding additional storage, but popping in drives um, and making this all possible um, just in a very quickly and seamlessly process. Excellent. Maybe, you know, we, we talked a little bit about the results and how you can move faster, uh, you know, digital transformation uh, all about leveraging your data and be able to react more quickly. So, uh, you know, the, the pandemic definitely has put services to the test and it sounds like uh, they're, they're doing well. Maybe step us back a little bit as to what led you to HPE and Nutanix, uh, how you made that decision. Well, you know, we, we went through a trial, you know, a period of proof of concept. We looked at Dell, we looked at, uh, obviously the HP, Nutanix, we, we looked at a few different solutions and it really boiled down to cost, you know, and what, you know, what we were getting bang for the dollar. Um, I think there's some other great solutions out there or good solutions out there, but none of them came to the value that the partnership with HP and Nutanix actually had to offer to us. You know, one of the things is that, you know, with, with this partnership is when there's a, a support issue, I call Nutanix, you know, I'm not calling HP, I'm not calling this other third party vendor, I'm not getting the runaround of, oh, that's not our problem, that's someone else's problem, you need to call the software team, you need to call the hardware team, you need to call, no, it's it's one person that, you know, we call, you know, we've had not had to go that route. Uh, Nutanix has been an excellent uh, partner for ours and, and they have been great to work with and uh, on, on the ball. And, you know, and that's what I always talk about and success is not just the success of, of the organization, but the success of the individuals and the success of the partnership between organizations. And, um, and that's what I looked with as a business partner that wants to help me, you know, and my role in my organization be successful. Great. Herman, uh, you know, we, we talked about modernizing, modernizing the environment. It bring us inside the applications, if you would. You know, what applications are you using? Uh, you know, maybe if it, you know, are, are, there, are there new initiatives that you're doing from an application standpoint? Uh, yeah, so, you know, we're running pretty much the same standard uh, applications that most organizations are running with, you know, uh, DHCP, IS, I, ISS, um, you know, but I, I have some other systems that we run that, you know, I can't talk about just because of the, the, the CIO, CISA, 
you know, hat that I also wear within the organization. I'm very security conscious about, you know, talking about those applications. Um, but, you know, but we run pretty much the same basic applications as most organizations do. Um, those specialized applications that we uh, also operate on, um, we do see an improvement in performance. We see uh, the, the speed need, speediness of the access, the more stability and reliability of the solutions. Uh, and so we're very pleased with the with the performance that we're getting. Excellent. Uh, you also you, you talked about just the the efficiency of what you're doing. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned earlier that you know public sector you can get started. You know, for smaller for smaller chunks using things like uh, you know Nutanix. Um, but budget obviously still a concern. Uh, I, I'm I'm sure you know anything you're doing. You know, with really the virtualization. Uh, in the infrastructure that you know is helping you keep uh, you know budget under control. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Nutanix uh, environment is is scalable. It allows us to be able to look at other solutions such as VDI, um, which which we're talking about and looking at you know potentially doing for for staff members that don't have laptops that may need laptops or need remote access into the system. We also. Uh, have that that ability to to scale up with just another blade you know more storage um, it makes it very easy to go with we're looking at cost saving measures uh, currently are running vmware on the back end but looking to convert that over to hav uh ahv yes uh in the future um that can also help us reduce those costs as well especially at this point in time where the city and county is looking for uh department budget savings Excellent. Yeah, Tarkin, I, I guess this would be a good point for you to, to you know, chime in on you know, just generally, you know, AHV and any other commentary you've got regarding- I was just trying to hold my, you know, hold my uh, 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 words back because the things that Herman is doing are so exciting in, in a way. Uh, you know, techies like myself still get really excited. Like uh, Herman talked about, right? You're not doing infrastructure for infrastructure's sake. At the end of the day, Herman and DA's office, like many e e e government uh, you know, offices, both in the Fed as well as in state and local, have to do more with less. Obviously, in this post-pandemic world, we need to get even more e efficient, more innovative, and get most out of, uh, you know, most output from our input. So in that context, bringing storage, compute, networking, all integrated in a converged way, with smart ways, not just adding them up, one plus one plus one equals three, but one plus one plus one equals less than one in terms of cost, making it make sure it's infrastructure is simplified, easy to deploy, easy to use. That's why we keep an MPS score of 90, by the way, uh, part of the reason, uh, a little bit of shameless plug there for you. I don't know many companies doing MPS 90 because we make infrastructure simple. So having said all this, uh, to Herman's point, you know, all those applications he's managing and building and, and, and obviously digitizing and in some way, you know, uh, 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 lifting and shifting to a new cloud digitized model. We want to make sure Herman and companies and organizations like DA's office under leadership uh, with innovative CIOs like Herman, making sure they have choice. They can choose the operating model they want on-prem, off-prem, hybrid or multi-cloud or in a government cloud fashion and deliver these services. To give an example, uh, we talked about home as the extended enterprise. Our home office is now part of the office. I have to secure my home the way I secure my new tanks headquarters because I'm now running my business from home. So in the past, there was a delineation between home and office. Now home is part of the extended office. The way I manage my trash, the way I manage my peripherals, applications, the network latency, everything is has to be dealt with in a very smart way. Like, even our paper trash in our office, we you know manage it carefully because of the IP. Uh, uh, you know, people steal IP. Guess what? Now at home, I have to have the same vigor. Guess what? You know, DA's office, the things that Herman is dealing with, they have to be so careful. Not only in the office, but at home. So in that sense, desktop as a service, virtual desktops, all these new technologies are going to be delivered in a simpler way. Our new solution frame all requires a browser. That's it and you know, deliver a browser-based application integration to home in a secure way, the things that you've been waiting for for a long time. So this post-pandemic world is going to make us more agile. 
It's going to make us more efficient, and hopefully we're going to do much more with less. Excellent. Well, Herman, I have one more question for you. If you can, give us a little bit of a look forward. We always love to hear from a CIO. Just number one, what's on your plate? And you know, as you look at this uh, s solution, uh, what you'll be uh, using it for and going. And secondly, if you've got anything, you know, if, if you could have, you know, something more that the ecosystem, you know, maybe HPE and Nutanix, or just maybe in general from, from uh, the ecosystem out there that would make, you know, your life and your staffs easier? Well, you know, that's a great question. Um, we have over 30 projects on our project list right now that are active projects that's going on. I have a staff of, nine IT professionals with three open positions. So well, I should say nine. I have six actual uh, staff members with three open positions uh, currently, and we're on a hiring freeze. So one of the great things about the Nutanix HP solution has been that I've been able to downsize from the two systems engineers to the one system engineer without necessarily losing any bandwidth or knowledge or experience because the environment is so easy to manage, which has been great. Um, We'll continue to, to, to move forward with the digitalization of our records and, and utilizing the cloud services that are available um, through the various channels. Uh, um, and it's, it's just an unprecedented time. I see that this is going to be the new norm. Excellent. So, Tarkin, we'll let you put the exclamation point on it. Uh, give us the final takeaway for HPE in Nutanix. So look, at the end of the day, uh, um, we are in this new software-defined world in a multi-cloud fashion. Having a partnership with, between two companies which covers data center services, DevOps services, as well as end-user services, end-to-end, -end, both in private cloud, also in a multi-cloud fashion, through telco and service providers, as well as hyperscalers like AWS and Azure, deliver the service with the operating model the customer chooses. Again, end to end, from data center to DevOps to end user, is the perfect marriage uh, that HPE and and, and Nutanix relationship delivers. So uh, we are really looking forward to uh, uh, working with customers like Herman to deliver on that on that dream, on that journey, making sure that uh, a cloud migration and cloud consolidation happens efficiently end to end. Again, from the data center to DevOps and to end user all the way in a fashion that we do more with less in this post-pandemic world. And we're looking forward to that partnership as we move forward. And thank you, Stu, and thank you, Herman, for the time today. Excellent. Well, Tarkin, uh, Maynard, always a pleasure to catch up with you. Really great to uh, get, get all the updates from you and really appreciate HPE and Nutanix. Bringing us Herman Brown, CIO. Herman, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate you sharing your story. Hopefully you'll be able to uh, you know, open up and, and hire those three people uh, that, that, that you're looking to hire in the near future. Thank you both so much for joining. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for having me, Tarkin. It's always a pleasure. Um, thanks to Nutanix and HP for just making a, a solid, you know, great solution uh, that it can help in the success of the DA's office. Really do appreciate it. Thank you so much, Herman and Stu. Really appreciate it. We'll be back with more coverage from HPE Discover 2020, the virtual experience. I'm Stu Miniman. Thank you as always for watching theCUBE.